the joy of music and the joy of Bach, Riley just felt totally connected inside. I think he actually felt like he was having a conversation. It was a very emotional connection. His performances of the B minor Mass were legendary in, in sort of a sacred event in, in many ways. You know, his, his approach to Bach was really ecstatic. <laughs> you could see that, I think, when he was conducting. I can never forget um, the year that we did B minor Mass, 2013, and I had been hired to do the soprano solos, and then, or the soprano two solos, and then I found out that I was pregnant. And my baby was due May 10th, and the concert was April 28th. And so I called Riley and I said, Riley, I, I've never done B minor, I'm so excited to do it, but I realize you might have to replace me. And he said, well, the baby's not due until May 10th. So I said, well, you know, you might want to have somebody else on deck. So Rebecca Kellerman was ready to jump in. She was there in the section with me. Um, but as it happened, when we did it, um, the soprano one who came in from out of town was also quite pregnant. She was about seven months pregnant and I was like 150 months pregnant. And I'll never forget the two of us like waddling down I, I had to like hold on to the riser. It was not elegant. And we waddled down for the Christe Les on duet. Um, and it was a wonderful concert. And that evening we went out to dinner after the concert. And I said, I think I just really worked too hard today. I really feel terrible. Like every 10 minutes, I feel horrible. <laughs> my husband said, I think you're just going to have a baby. And so I went to the hospital and my son was born the next morning. So, of course, it's just such a special memory for me. Um, I'll never forget that concert. One thing that Riley really brought to it in a, a way that I haven't experienced quite the same with any other conductor was just a, a joy to the whole thing. Yeah. That was kind of pervading the entire piece. He didn't just act like he was interested in your life. You know, he really wanted to know each and every one of us. And that kind of close, that intimacy, that sort of real friendship um, was so powerful in terms of then building the relationship on stage. Because when you stood up to sing for Riley, you knew that you were singing for someone who, who really knew you and who it was like seeing a friend, you know, I mean, it was seeing a friend every time you would get up to, to work with him. You know, he was amazed at the music of Bach in such a genuine and almost ch uh, childlike way that that enthusiasm just drew us all in. That was the charm of Riley. You know, he was he was the ultimate Peter Pan. Every movement of that piece is something to somebody. Um, I fortunately, as a trumpet player, get to play a lot of those happier moments. Uh, 
you know, the part where the trumpet is super prominent and very exposed, he would very often give you that look like, I know you can do it, this is gonna be good. You know, he, he, his eyes were very intense. You always knew that you wanted to play your best for him. He was so in control of every single note. You know, he knew it so profoundly on like a cellular level. He shared it with us with like so much joy. So much of his spirit is in the organization. I mean, it's all, you know, his idea and something that he built up over many decades. So it's only I think, natural that his spirit lives on in it. He was very kind, he was very encouraging. Um, he had very strong opinions about how music should be done. Uh, but because of that attitude, I think it, it, it made us want to perform for him, you know, to an ever higher standard. He pushed everybody to excel, including himself. Because Riley's love for this music was just so all-consuming, um, and he transmitted that love to us so effectively, it's been really easy for that to survive. The music is still here, and so we all still feel like we want to share it. And there's also that added kind of bonus that every time we share in this music, it's like we get to kind of visit, visit Riley again. founded the consort because he had an idea about playing Bach on period instruments in this country. He wanted something like that in his backyard. And I, I think that's his crowning achievement. And, you know, his legacy lives on. I mean, the group is still great, you know, and it's in good hands. That's his greatest achievement is to create something that, you know, is like I'm sure he would have wanted to, you know, live beyond him. <laughs>